Today we're going to look at the new TC001 thermal imaging camera by Topdon. Is this one a winner? It's very good, but a few things could make it even better. Let's check it out. This is a thermal imaging camera that attaches to a cell phone. And as you can see, this is the official unboxings. The model number is the TC001. I've got a lot of the lights off in here just so that I don't get reflections of the plastic. That's why the shadows. The overhead lights tend to reflect on plastic a lot, so keep them off just at least until I get the unit unboxed. And then uh, we'll try it out and see how this one performs. These are useful for looking for heat loss, looking for hot components, etc. So here the unit is. Comes in a little protective carry case and of course the destruction manual. Topped on. Comes with an extension cable. And a USB adapter. And of course, the camera itself. Unlike other thermal imaging cameras, this one actually has software that will run on Windows 7, or on a PC for that matter. And it comes with a cable with a USB-C and USB-A adapter. I've installed the software. Let's uh, fire it up. And then I'm getting the version of this file is not compatible with your computer's version of Windows that you're running. Uh, let's deal with this. I guess it would have helped if I'd scrolled down the screen. I saw this um, download for Windows, but of course, this was cut off the bottom of the screen. It says, requires Windows 7, Windows 10, or 11, but I hadn't scrolled down far enough to see that it says 64-bit version, and unfortunately, this laptop is running Windows 32-bit version. So we are kind of hooped as far as running this thing on my laptop. I was hoping that that was going to work, but I guess it's not. So I'm going to install the software on my Android phone now. I've downloaded or I've, I've searched for the TC001 software. So let's install it and then we'll plug it into the phone. Now, one thing I, one thing I will mention that annoys me with all of these devices and manufacturers really should get their act together on this. You're going to make something that you can plug into your phone. Make something that can plug into your phone when it's in a case. This will not plug in in the case. I have to use the adapter cable. Make something that's got a longer USB port so that I don't have to take my phone out of the case. This is designed for HVAC workers and other professionals to look for heat loss or look for hot and cold components and stuff. For using our phone, for work, the last thing we want to do is take it out of the protective case. We put our phone in a case, mine's a, a Spigen case, which has been great, by the way, uh, or an OtterBox, but we put our phones in a case for a reason, so that if the phone gets dropped or banged around, it's not going to shatter the glass back, because these phones all have a glass back to them, or at least most of them these days do. The last thing we want to do is remove our phone from its protective case to plug a camera in, and then having to have a really long cable like this and hold the phone in one hand and the camera in the other is kind of a pain. It'd be nice just to be able to plug the camera in right to the phone and, and, and work with it. Right, the software has installed. I have to remove that USB-A end and see if this will plug in. Will this plug into my phone? Okay, that plugs in. Now I can plug the camera into the end of the cable and launch the software. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. So we can see, it tells me the temperature of everything. You see my hand, it's upside down. As soon as you plug in the camera into the extension cable, it should launch automatically, which it does. 
I'll remove my phone from its case and as you can see my phone looks like it's brand new. I can then plug the camera directly into the, the bottom of the phone and the software will actually launch itself automatically as soon as you fire up or as soon as you plug it in the software will launch itself and you get a nice clear image of what is directly in front of the camera which this is how it should be but it needs to be in the case and when I unplug it it should kill the software which it does I'm gonna put my phone back in its case again because it'll be just my luck to have this thing slide out of my hand be, be the fact that it's all glass guess what's gonna happen so let me just throw the phone back in the case so back to using the extension cable again as soon as you plug in the camera into the extension cable it should launch automatically so if I move the camera down there it is glowing red hot well it's not hot but you can see that it's 21.6 degrees 21 at the hottest which is not hot but it looks real hot on the camera you can see that the temperature difference is there compared to the outside world that thing's hot and that's the beauty of thermal imaging is that you can find hot components I'm actually liking this camera at first I thought that that was a limitation but uh, now I see that this is actually a big advantage over the competition which I have their camera as well and it fits on a bracket but of course it's a very short cord so you have to be well, I basically have to mount the camera to the bracket. This one here, having an external camera that you can move around and see things of different temperatures, like that light, for example. You can see how much hotter the LED light is, the body, the heat radiator. It help if I have it the right way up. If we look around at other things in the workshop here, we'll see other things that are hot, like the monitor. That's the, that's the monitor that I'm watching this on. If we look up, I have the lights off in here right now. So uh, that's a couple lights that are running right up there. Those are the only lights that are on, but the, the ceiling lights are off. Here's the, uh, there's me. There's the camera that I'm recording this on. It's relatively cool. Actually, this camera, this this shows me off in my best light. <laughs> pretty cool. All right, so this so far, I'm pretty impressed. It's and and as far as stability, it's uh, so far much more stable than the other camera that I've used in the past. Everything is working as it's supposed to. Unfortunately, I don't have any equipment that's malfunctioning to look for hot components, but that's one of the strengths to using one of these units is you can detect a component that's getting hot at a much higher or much faster rate than other components. Like, for example, if I point this up at the ceiling, I'll go turn the lights on. And we'll watch the lights heat up because we'll see the temperature um, as the ballast and so forth heat up. Let me fire the lights up and just see what it looks like as the lights come on. See the lights are on now. And we'll start, we should start to see, there we go. We're starting to see the actual heat sinks start to heat up on the LEDs which are right along here. Those are LED lights. These ones are these ones are CFLs that are running. That's why they're wicking hot because they've been on for a few minutes. But there's a good example. You can see the ends of the fluorescent lights. This is a four foot fluorescent fixture. You can see the the ends of the tubes are starting to warm up now. I probably can record this too. I haven't even played with the software yet, but I'm sure I can probably make a recording from this if I 
tap the camera button here. Okay, so now if I tap this, that should be recording video, I would think. Now, now we're recording video. So I can now make a recording of this. Me waving my hand in front of the of the camera. And if I stop the recording and if I click this one, this one would be a snapshot. So if I want to take a picture of my hand or whatever, or just want to take a picture of that, just there. Now I've taken an image. Now I should be able to go back and look at these images after the fact. So if I unplug the camera and that shuts it down. If I go to my gallery, picture of my cat. Okay, so there's the still image and that's the video. So if I click on here, it's not recording sound, it doesn't sound like, and there's no sound recorded, just video. Uh, there's the still image. So you can capture, like for example, if you need to show a client, whereas AC system is is losing efficiency like a leak or a hot or cold pipe or whatever you can take a picture and show it to the client or you can do a video and show it to the client so very impressed tc view from top dawn it's the tc view this one's model number is uh, tc001 looks to be a great little product it's simple to use can't be simpler just uh, just plug it in and the software will launch automatically once it's installed doesn't get any simpler than that I'll put the link in the description this was just supposed to be a little short video and it's probably gone on longer than I had really intended but uh, there we go for those curious to, to where the files go when you've stored them on your phone um, bring up my phone here. I've got a I've got an SD card and internal memory. It goes to the internal memory of the phone. If I go to the phone, and I go down to the digital camera folder, I will find a folder in here marked TC001, and here are the files that I can now display on the computer. We're going to import the files and um, put them into the video. These are the first shots that were taken in the shop when I just showed you the second ago. I'm going to take a few more shots. I'm going to take it outside. We're going to see how it performs outside. I'm going to record some hot and cold items, some really hot items here in a minute. It's also important to never point it at the sun, which I just did because I wasn't really paying attention, but it doesn't seem to have uh, harmed it at all. But uh, you, you never want to point your thermal imaging camera at something that's really hot and the sun qualifies as something that will burn these things out in an instant although I did catch it there totally by accident and it doesn't seem any worse for wear but not something to recommend you can see the heat from the tires the car is cold it hasn't been driven but you can see the rubber tires are hot just from the sun it's giving you an indication a relative indication of the, the temperature of the item as you can see, the grill of the car, for example, is hot. Grass is still relatively cool out. Look at the transformer glowing up on the pole there. Let's light the stove and see how this looks. You can see the heat in the exhaust gases quite a bit above the flame. The scale on the right showing the temperatures between 20 and 225 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature range of the different colors. I got all four burners going here. 
camera is probably freaking out. Okay, I'm turning them off and you'll still see the actual temperature of the grate is showing. Something you probably shouldn't do with a thermal camera, but uh, it doesn't appear to be any worse for wear after exposing it to some extreme heat situations. Anyway, that's it for this one. Kat says, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.